Hello, good people. It is Ravi, I'm Will, and I am here today with a very special guest. I'm honored and privileged to be able to serve Joe as one of my accountability and high performance clients. Joe is an individual whose work and whose passion is particularly close to my heart. Joe is an entrepreneur and dating photographer with an extensive background in transforming the dating lives of men all over the world. And he, as an individual, is a fascinating individual who has been on a hell of a journey. We're going to dive into this a lot more and explore how Joe came to be the man who makes the transformations happen, how Joe came to be the man who facilitates love and connection and belonging and community and allows many people and many men around this world to feel empowered, in control, and as if they are worthy and deserving. And, and this is amazing, amazing, heart-centered, important stuff that Joe does. And why we can uh, see the passion and the drive and the deep knowledge that Joe has, why that comes out in the authentic and very insightful approach he has to photography that tells a tale and that can really evoke emotions is Joe's journey and the pathway he's taken in life. And today we're gonna dive into this. So, Joe, let's, let's learn a little bit about yourself. How about you start by telling us, if I haven't, if I haven't thoroughly exhausted everything in my introduction, in your words, what you do. Appreciate that, Ravi. Um been an honor being on this podcast <clears throat> and working with you and seeing your journey as well. Um, I, my core mission, I, at one point I sat down and wrote out what is it that truly matters to me. It was actually funny because it was in a place in my life where it was actually close to the bottom on the outside, but close to the top on the inside. When I was in Colombia, um, almost broke, but I, I sat down and wrote, what is my purpose in life? Um, and that was, I want to help people build a life they truly love, not one out of obligation, but one out of, uh, building it from the ground up. Like, what do you really want? Right. A lot of people have these ideas of what other people want for them or what's possible or what they deserve or what they don't deserve. And I wanted to, I wanted everything I do to somehow give people that, the tools they needed, internal, external, et cetera. Um, so I threw a lot of stuff on the fire, um, was broke as hell and uh, homeless for two years. Um, I was literally only on the street for three years. So to be clear, when I mean homeless, I mean like couch surfing with friends, sleeping over at girls' houses, et cetera. Um, and I... I, I I picked, I was uh, very lonely at one point, picked up a camera, um, this one, this one actually, this is my first camera, my second camera is the one that's filming me right now, um, picked up this camera and started to um, take photos of myself to get more dates because I was really lonely and I really wanted to get um, some companionship. I wanted, uh, to be honest, I wanted more casual stuff at that time. I wanted more sex. I wanted more flings. Um, and I wanted them more consistently because I felt like I wasn't worth it. I, I, and and the world wasn't giving me what I wanted. Uh, so I went out with a friend of mine. We used my camera and took photos of each other. And I got more and more results. And eventually somebody just walked up to us. He's like, how much do you charge? He's like, well, first of all, what are you doing? And I'm like, well, we're taking photos for each other's dating profiles. And he's like, how much do you charge? And I'm like, ooh, <laughs> light bulb went off. <laughs> and then... I just started, I started charging very little. First, I, I did a few for free to build up a portfolio. And then I started charging little. I got more and more experience um, helping guys be noticed by women and really see that they are a catch and they and that women do like them because I take them, I take their strengths, I take what they're looking for and I put them all together and, and get photos that portray that in a way that speaks to women in a way that women can understand through the photo. Because that's also another thing is most guys take photos and they don't really understand how women look at the photos on dating apps. Um, 
I actually just talked with our friend uh, Mario Tuboni yesterday mm -hmm. about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, fast forward to today, I've helped. I haven't done a recent count, but it's probably around 130 guys um, get more matches and dates. And uh, I've had a lot of success. I've had clients be like, you know, I went on a bunch of dates and then found my girlfriend. And I'm mm -hmm. like, awesome. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll reach out. I'm like, Hey, how's it going with the photos? And they'll be like, Hey, I'm sorry. I haven't been on any dates in a while because I found my girlfriend. <laughs> I'm like, well, that's awesome. <laughs> that's mm -hmm. great. Like that's, and some, some, some guys also just want to play the field and, and have a bunch of more sexual experience. Um, and so I work with a lot of guys who are more on the uh, casual side as well. And uh, you know, a lot of them are just, you know, I'm going on dates every week. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. So it, it um, it, it warms my heart to see my work actually help people in a tangible mm. way. And what more meaningful work to do because life is about people and the connection that we have with each other. And those are the things that when you consider people's to take a slightly different turn, regrets on the deathbed is that they didn't have mm. the connections and the spending the quality time with those who mattered because life is about people. We are social animals. We are evolved to live in tribes. And when we have people and connection and community and bonds, we can conquer any challenge. We can face any obstacle head on and we can bring the best version of ourselves into the world. But I think what's important to recognize is the heart wants what it wants. And if you desire more love and more intimacy, then it's important to recognize that and your desires are important and they're sacred and we're on a healing journey and we're here to choose the vision that we want in life and go towards it. And in being able to facilitate that, it is empowering because the world that we live in is an increasingly lonely place, certainly for men. I know the leading cause mm. of suicide for men over 50 is loneliness. So the thing is, these things are fixable. They're fixable. They are fixable. You, if you don't know yourself, and most of us don't, then we speak to people like yourself, yeah, and understand that these things, there is a, a strategy we can put in place. There is a coherent, logical, sensible approach that we can take to tangibly actually improve one's outcomes in a meaningful way. But it just requires expert guidance, tweaking, course correction, from someone who's been there with 100 plus men who's had significant results and transformations again and again and again and again and again for quite some time. And it's empowering to know that, that it's not that we're not getting results because of who we are inside or something being so wrong with us. In fact, I think you have to almost go on this journey to recognize that now there is there is so much worth to us as people. Like the, the most important things about us as people, that they're, they're far within us. It's, it's not the surface. It's our heart, our soul, our, our values, and just the will to go out into the world and to, to be our best. And these things are so powerful. And we can share them, and we can put them out there, and we can allow them to be experienced and enjoyed by others. But it just does require a little bit of thinking and some creativity to put this out into the world. But that's why, fortunately enough, we have people like you. And that's great. Now, before this though, Joe, I wanna I want to learn about who younger Joe was. So I want us to go back to Joe at 21. And I want you to talk to us about what that was like, how he felt, and what his experience was. Sure. Um, so I was a virgin at that time. And I, before 21, I had just decided that um, girls didn't like me because every time I tried, girls rejected me and I would get really emotional about it. And a lot of that is tried, tied to uh, emotional trauma in my childhood. Um, I've since grown and I don't blame my parents anymore. They had the best intentions and, 
you know, for whatever reason, they weren't able to provide what I needed. Uh, they had a really bad divorce when I was young. A lot of other stuff happened. Um, but I, whenever I would go towards women, I, um, I came at it in the completely wrong way. I was way too intense because I had so many unmet emotional needs that I hadn't um, dealt with yet. Uh, so I, I just decided that I, I wasn't ready. But as I got to the age of about 21, um, I started losing weight. I was, I was very overweight. I was about 100 pounds overweight. Um, I started losing that weight. That took a year or two of um, pro maybe like a year of gradual effort and then a year of like running every single day um, and getting off medication that I didn't need, um, you know, psychotropic stuff that I, I didn't need. I started eating better. I started um, revamping my life from the ground up. Uh, and part of that, at one point, um, something clicked and it was, I was also in therapy at the time. So that really helped something clicked. And I was like, Oh shit, I deserve to have a love life that actually suits me. I deserve to actually have sex with a woman, uh, and, and feel like I deserve that kind of intimacy. Cause at that, uh, up to that point, I didn't feel like I was like, I want it, but, uh, I'm not worth it. Like no girl's going to want me. So like at that point, I just I just decided it wasn't for me, even though I really wanted it. I just kind of gave up. Um, but I started talking to girls. I just I didn't really like listen, like watch any YouTube videos or read any books about it. I just pushed myself past because I was pushing myself past so many things health wise at the time. Um, I actually looked at some old uh, tests because I you know I had a recent health thing that I'm I've I've beat. Uh, I've conquered. Um, and I, I, I looked at some old tests on the patient portal from that time. And like, you know, the cholesterol is like all off, like lipids are all off, like every, all my labs, just the normal blood test is like half of the things are either too high or too low. And I'm like, that's like, now I look at my blood tests. And like, besides that specific health issue that's done, everything was like completely perfect. Like everything was just on point. And I'm like, you know, I've, I really makes me feel good about my health. But at that time I was, you know, I was fat. And I can say that about myself. I was, I was not in a good place physique wise, health wise, um, energy wise, you know, it was really, really bad mentally in my, my mind. Cause I was also getting off the, med the meds. I pushed myself past that and, um, uh, just started talking to girls and, uh, you know, I, I transferred from, um, community college to a large university and, uh, lost my virginity there, had my first girlfriend, um, you know, learn a lot of lessons about how to interact with women, which I'm still learning. Um, and just at a different level though, because it's like now, and then I, I made up for lost time. I went, I just went, you know, after I broke up with her, I went crazy. I went and had sex with like a ton of women, um, more than most guys will in their lifetimes. And, um, you know, got that out of my system, um, gained a sense of, um, definitely made up for lost time and gained a sense of confidence. Like now I don't feel at all. Like if I, if I'm about to have sex with a woman, I don't feel at all. Like I'm not going to perform. Like I know time and time again, I've had a good time and she's had a good time. And I'm not worried because I, I put in, I put in the work, I put myself out there. Uh, I've failed more times than most guys ever try in their whole lives. And I've also succeeded more, more times than most guys have even tried as well, because I just decided at one point, um, this is what I want. I'm going to get it. And I'm going to, I'm going to do the things that I need to do. I'm going to go through the hardships that I need to go through. And that's an important thing. I think a lot of people, they decide they want something, but they don't decide they also want the hardships. And so the hardships come and they give up, but most things that are worth it in life, the reason that they're worth it is because they're rare. And the reason they're rare is because most people aren't willing to accept the hardships. Um, a really great example that Mark Manson used in one of his books, I think it was The Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck. He said, well, I mean, most people want to be a rock star, but how many people want to practice over and over and over again and be rejected and rejected and rejected and have to, you know, get shitty gigs for like 50 bucks here and there. Um, and you know, how many, and there's like so much more that goes into that journey. How many people want to do that? Like most people want the outcome, but not the action. And so one thing I'm working on in my life right now is how do I 
I didn't even like, I kind of like, I didn't even talk about like a huge bit of my journey about like being broke and trying to go into entrepreneurship and dropping out of college. We're going to um, get into this. Homeless. Yeah. But like how many people, like I'm, I'm a successful business owner now and I want to be more successful. Um, but I'm successful, you know, at a base level, uh, in that I, I make my living and then some, but like I was homeless for two years and I was broke as fuck for like six more. Um, so like, yeah, how many people are willing to do that? Most people, the reason that a lot of people aren't entrepreneurs is because they, everyone's journey is different and a different level of hardship, you know, that might not be what you have to go through, but you're going to have to go through something and you have to accept the hard, you have to accept the work with the outcome. You know, you won't have to work that hard the whole time, but you can't just say, Hey, I want the universe to gift me this outcome. It's like, no, you have to earn that shit. You have to be the person that earns that. And if you're not the person that earns that, you're the, just the person that wishes for it. Uh, I mean, even if, if somebody gives it to you, you're not going to be able to keep it. That's exactly true. And and this is something that we can talk about what actually facilitates growth. And the universe is, it's in some ways, it's fairer than we think. It's always been difficult to obtain things of value. And the best way to get what you want is, frankly, to pay the price for it. Now, what isn't as palatable for us as humans is the price for this is a lot of work. It is sacrifice. It is dedication. It is showing up again and again. It is having moments where you think, what the fuck am I doing? Is this going to work out? Mm -hmm. Been there. It's the moment. Oh, yeah, brother. You throw your hands in the air and say, what the fuck is this? You, you, we take hours. We yeah. have adverse things happen to us we out of nowhere things just happen you're hit with a you're hit with a um, unexpected circumstance you lose a few clients and you just sit there thinking what the fuck am i doing and that is the moment where most quit and that is the reason they don't win it's those moments yeah. where you have to go back to universal principles double down find ways to restore yourself mentally spiritually rejuvenate yourself physically, bio biologically, and then double down and go back and focus on the things that are within our control because that's what the smartest people of all time did. That's what the Stoics did. They understand that these are the factors within my control, externalities we cannot control, but these are the needle movers. And if we focus on these, because these are what are proven to produce growth, regardless of who we are, where we may be from, if we do these, they will produce growth. Because the fact of the matter is, whilst there are human beings living and breathing on this earth, there are going to be problems to solve. And us as entrepreneurs, we go out there and solve those problems. But, of mm. course, being human and being homo sapiens with the psyche and the monkey brain that we have, mm -hmm. that's, that's the hard part. It's all in here that causes the suffering and causes the pain and the dark nights of the soul. But for those who can persist incremental progression and improvement and progressively larger goals are possible as you yourself now has been achieving goal after goal just think about even what you've shared now because of course i know we've been in the same men's group in the past we've been we're in the same community we work together we have an accountability partnership so it's my job to show up every single day and support you in being the best version of yourself and pushing you and pushing your business to the highest place it can be is my ongoing commitment and all the things that you've gained on your journey from the weight loss journey, the physical transformation to getting a fantastic physique to, to completely overhauling your personal image. Yep. Yeah, yeah. And it's even more impressive when you have the opportunity to check out some of Joe's photos, because he's been in fantastic, fantastic shape and overhauling the style, the accessories, all these things that you did, Joe, deliberately, consciously cultivating these there's, there's a re there's a rationale behind all of this and you know it this is the depth of your wisdom and knowledge you know about how we can express ourselves we can make tweaks and adjustments to have more edge more flair and stand out and all of these things you learned through that process that you went on and it was trial and error and you actually struggled with online dating at one point now could you comment on that a little bit for us so people know that there was once upon a time a version of you who set his mind to conquering online dating and had to go through a bit of a bit of hardship there too. Yeah. Um, 
there's so there's a story that is i mean this not even just a story it's part of my life that i put on my website in the about me section um but, but to be honest i want to change it because that story is one of the nights of the soul but i don't think it's the most pertinent night of the soul um and the story that I do want to say, which is more pertinent to actually why I do this. Um, I So I, I was in college at Rutgers. I was studying computer science. I decided at one point, I had one semester left or two semesters, really, if I'm being honest. I had about a year left of college. And I was like, I could do that. I could finish college, get a coding job. And then, because I, I always knew I wanted to be an entrepreneur. <laughs> and then be an entrepreneur, right? I could do that. But my rationale, in my mind, I told myself at that point, why would I spend a few thousand bucks? Cause you know, I had grants and loans and stuff. Why, and But I still had to spend some money, you know, and I had to owe that back later, the loans at least. Why would I spend $5,000, $10,000 for the last year of college at Rutgers for a job that I'm gonna hate? I'm just going to drop out and start a business now and I'll, I'll, I'll make it. Um, looking back on that, it's one of those things where I don't want to go, I wouldn't want to go through it again, but if I had to redo it, I would still do it the same way. Uh, not everyone has to do it that way. A lot of people are successful in saving up a lot of money first and then being an entrepreneur. Um, I think that was really the only way that I, at that time, who I was could do this because, um, Frankly, I had an authority issue. <laughs> I mean, I like to tell people I really had an authority solution, um, which was to be my own boss. But, um, you know, some people would call that an authority problem. I did not want anyone to tell me what to do. And so being homeless for two years um, was easier for me than getting a corporate job and then finishing school, you know, putting myself through a year of college and getting a corporate job. I had a very high... I had a very low tolerance for doing things I didn't want to do, um, which actually kind of bit me in the ass because in business, you have to do things you don't want to do. But um, at least it was towards a goal that I wanted, not towards a goal that would get me to another goal that would get me to another goal that would get me to where I wanted. It was like, no, I'm going directly for it. And I don't care if it's harder. Um, but what that did was I I was traveling, try, I traveled to Eastern Europe to learn from a business mentor of mine. Um, and I found myself swiping on online dating and being, even though I was still at that point, kind of chunky, I'd, lo I'd lost a hundred pounds, but I was chunky. I didn't have my fashion down. I didn't have my grooming down, you know, like, you know, how I groom my beard, how I have my accessories and stuff. I didn't have any of that down. Um, I was the exotic guy from America. You know, I was a foreigner. So it was kind of easy for me to swipe on the apps. Um, but it was easy for me to swipe on the apps because I was a foreigner, but I also... When, when I met up, it was hard for me to do anything with girls because I, I was broke as fuck. I was homeless at the time. I was living out of a hostel that I actually wasn't paying for. Um, that was a different situation. They kicked me out. This big Russian burly dude was like, big fish. And he was like, you know, almost beating me up. I was like, he was about to beat me up. I'm like, that's 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 pretty intimidating. Um, but I was not in a good place in life. So like I had the ambition and the drive. So some girls wanted to be with me, but it was, it was very difficult for me to get what I wanted. And so it, I was like, I am getting some matches because I'm the foreigner, but I need to get more. Like I need, to, I need to figure out how to fix this right now. And so I, I remember getting rejected after rejected, rejection after rejection after rejection, you know, going on a date, nothing happening, going on a date, nothing happening. One time a girl literally left in the middle of the date and she was like one of the hotter girls. And she like, you know, we met up, we, we, we were like, you know, together for a bit. And then she literally left in the middle of the date. And I'm like, this is fucking sucks. Like what the hell's going on? And I found myself in the bottom bunk of a shitty hostel that was five euros a night that I couldn't afford because I was literally broke. Um, crying myself to sleep in the fetal position because I'd been rejected, rejected after rejected after rejected. And not to mention before I went, before I left when I was in America, I wasn't even getting any matches. The only reason I was getting matches was because I was a foreigner. And that hurt so, so much. I just remember that moment. And I remember that moment and how, how much it hurt. And I, 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 I told myself like this moment, this has to be like, you know, it's one, one of the things, the benefits that I have is I, I always like, I always see the positive in something, even if it's like a stoic positivity. I'm like, 
you know, when I, when I had a really, really bad moments when I was homeless, for instance, when I literally was on the street for a couple nights in Colombia and I was like, I, I always, and, and also in the hostel when I was like, I'm at a shitty ass hostel that I can't pay for, even though it's literally like less than $10 a night, you know, the equivalent of like seven dollars a night. I, I would say this would be a great story to tell people when I make it, this will be a fucking great story, which is like, you know how it happened. I kind of like made it. I made it. I knew at that point when I was sad, I'm like, I'm sad as fuck. But once I get a lot of masters on online dating, once I, once I crack this shit, you know, I'm crying in the fetal position. Once I crack this shit, this will be a great story to tell people. And I, I, I thought that as I was sad as hell. And so I went out and I literally, I didn't have any, I didn't have any nice cameras. I didn't have any nice, nice, big, big lenses. I, um, I just had a shitty camera, a shitty phone, sorry, which was actually, I, I actually, it's actually fun, another funny s- small side tangent. I was so broke in Colombia that I pawned my nice phone and used my backup phone. And this was my backup phone, which was a shitty, like one of those crappy, like s- shitty phones. And the lens cover was actually broke. Like the glass and the lens cover broke. So every photo I took was like really blurry. <laughs> I mean, you could store it. It was like a really, it was almost like you put like Vaseline, a little, a little bit of Vaseline on the lens. That's kind of what it looked like. Cause like just the, the glass on, on the lens had like come off and there was like dust on the lens. It was, it was really bad. Um, but I was like, you know what, I'm going to crack this shit. And I, and I went out, I took photos with people from the hostel, you know, guys that were friendly and, you know, was like, oh, you know, he's a cool guy. He's, he's fun, even though he's kind of weird and in a, you know, a bad situation in life. He's, you know, he's fun. Everyone in the hostel is in a bad situation in life. Um, half the people, not everybody. Some people are just really fun, but you know, I was in the hostel cause that's all I could afford. And, or even though I couldn't afford it. And, um, I just started taking photos with my broken shitty cell phone <laughs> and I got more matches. And I was like, what the hell? Like, this is the shittiest camera, whatever, you know? And then I came back to the U S got a camera, like an actual good camera and then got good lenses and like upped my game and it was it wasn't even to build a business in fact um our mutual friend andy from kill your inner loser um he he was the guy who helped who like told me what equipment to buy and like gave me the basics of how to actually take good photos and he was the one that once i started people once people started noticing he was the one that like pushed me to be like you should do this as a business and i initially said no i was like no i don't well no like I'm just doing this for myself. And he's like, no, like people need this. And so like his pushing and our mutual friend radicals pushing um, a lot of people just kind of pushed me and eventually like, you know what, maybe this does make sense. And then I realized that it, it, it like ties perfectly into that um, mission that I, that I wrote for myself to help people build the life they love. And um, yeah, I, I hope that answers your question. It's, it's a hell of a wild tale. For those who've just heard it for the first time and some of those details I actually didn't know and that is it just it, it speaks of the resilience that you've got and the determination that you've got and the work that you've actually put in which is utterly remarkable think about think about all the things you've achieved just to lose that 100 plus pounds just to develop that physique was month after month, year after year of consistency, hard work, dedication, hiring coaches, just going through a whole process, nailing every facet of your recovery, your diet, all the work you did on yourself, um, the style overhauls, the grooming, the tattooing, every, every, the developing your archetype, all of these, all the, the therapy, all the commitment, you see, you know? So, but yeah. the thing is- You can't really see my get, tattoos, but- Yeah, we, but <laughs> this, 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 this is year after year of hard work man, that you truly put mm. in with determination, with drive to say, okay, I'm going to get this. T- oh, this is what I want. This is the life I want. This is the things I want. This is the abundance I want. And all of this journey ensues that takes you all around the world that has you sticking to your principles and your vision and not wavering. And just in the face of even a couple of nights on the street in Colombia, you still didn't break. Yeah. You still didn't crack. You kept fucking moving forward man so there is no more deserving human being of success than yourself Joe, and it is coming though know, you've already achieved fantastic things <laughs> and it's just going to thank you amplify amplify from here now with that being said 
you actually touch on something quite significant that I think we can get into now. And that is the start of your business journey and the point in which our journeys kind of intersect. And what drives that is the fact that we were in the same men's group, which was a group for very ambitious men who want to be the best version of themselves, led by, like you say, one of our one of our mentors and mutual friend, an incredible, incredible man called Andy, who pushed us both, who supported both of our growth, who was instrumental in a lot of our growth. And in particular, at that time in the journey, I was several years behind, you know, um, in self-improvement, so to speak. I was actually at, near the start of it. So I was still having to lose all my weight, still having to build myself up and get over so many horrendous, like just really low self-esteem and limiting beliefs that you have to work through. You have to work through, right? But at that time, I was working as a project manager and I remember this passionate, enthusiastic guy with wisdom, with a lot, a lot of knowledge to share, who was yourself, Joe. And at the time, you were out there trying to, you were actually embarking on this journey and you were driving Uber at this time. And you'd just gone through and really committed to photography, to actually developing your brand and your and your business. And I want to dive into that experience of setting up Dating Unchained, going out into the world and making an actual business out of that. And some of the mm -hmm. things that you went through mentally. Sure. So a couple of things are important here, and that is uh, at that point, I had already failed at making businesses that supported me for five or six years. Um, it had been about, about yeah, about that time, because I started trying to make businesses that supported me when I was at Rutgers. Um, and I, you know, I started paying business mentors, reading a bunch of business books, talking to a lot of different people. And I learned the very, very basic lessons um, before that time. Now I didn't learn a lot of the implementation or, you know, a lot of the more advanced or I'm not advanced at business. I would say I'm solid intermediate. Um, but I learned a lot of the basic stuff before I even tried doing this. I, you know, I'd already went to Eastern Europe to, to, to the, like the entrepreneurship retreat where I would, was able to talk to really high achievers, like, you know, five, six figures a month, people that were making that amount um, millions a year in revenue. Um, I was able to talk to them one-on-one. -on -one. I actually, uh, paid for that retreat, uh, with a loan that I never paid back and got charged off. <laughs> so I, I guess I paid for it in uh, my credit score, uh, continue to pay for it in my credit score. Cause it's still on my credit score, <laughs> but, um, uh, I was broke as fuck and, uh, just did it anyway. Um, so I, I would say that was like, that was maybe, it was it was kind of halfway in my business journey when I started this business, but it was also more like a third of the way. I don't know. I don't know where it was like it was about halfway. So um I can start there for sure. Um, but I'd already learned a lot of the important lessons at that point. Uh, but one of the important there are a couple important moments in my business. One of them was when uh, I got deactivated from Uber, um, and that was like because that was what was keeping me afloat. And so I was putting a lot of energy into photography, but I would, at the same time, I didn't have the urgency. So I wasn't doing everything I could. And once I got deactivated from Uber, I'm like, fuck, I, I, I started doing other things to scramble to make money, um, which got me some money. Um, I did some window cleaning, you know, built a, a temporary window cleaning business and did some other gig economy stuff. But I was like, I need to make this work because if I don't make this work, like getting money in these other ways is more draining and less consistent than Uber. And I, I can't sustain myself this way. And even Uber wasn't sustaining because like I still, you know, I was putting a lot of miles on my car. I had to get repairs and shit. So, um, and you know, a lot of money into gas and it was, it was really not sustainable. And also they could take it out from under me. Like they did whenever, whenever, you know, whenever they deemed it necessary or whenever they wanted to. 
Um, and it also wasn't free. It was a lot of hours a week. So I ended up, that was one key moment where I'm like, I have to make this work. Another key moment was um, when I started getting some clients, but it wasn't paying my bills. And I was like, fuck, do I start trying a bunch of other things or do I just decide to commit to this? And I went through about a month where I'm like, I don't know what to do. And I was like, maybe I should try a few different things. Maybe I should try some tangential. Maybe I should like try other types of photography too. Or maybe I should try like going back into logo designing, which was a business that I tried at one point. Um, but eventually I decided it's like, no, I need to narrow it down. It's scary because I don't have a, a safety net. I don't have money coming in. And this isn't working right now. But if I put more focus on it, then it works. Cause there's, you know, there's entrepreneurs that I trusted that said, Hey, you could spend all your energy on 50 different things or one thing. And in the end, you'll probably be just as successful either way, but one way gets you more focus and stability in your life and actually helps you move further in the long run, which is focusing on one business. So I just, I decided to trust that and do that. And, you know, it, it really helped me out. Um, mm -hmm. And so that was another point in business. Um, and then another point in business is when you started your business, um, because I was, I had, I had set like a to do list for myself and it wasn't optimized. I wasn't, you know, I was trying to, to find the needle movers, like you say, the things that I do that I could do every day that actually move the needle instead of we're just busy work, you know, instead of made me feel like I was working, but not really helping in the end. I'm like, what actually moves the needle? Um, I was trying to find those things. I was successful enough at finding those things, but, and I was also like implementing like 70 to 80% of it. I wasn't, a, I wasn't doing everything every day. Some days I was like, yeah, whatever. I'm too tired. I'll not do, you know, it doesn't matter that much if I don't post, if I post half the time, you know, if I forget to post on Instagram, one of the days, it's not a big deal. Um, and so I wasn't really op operating at my peak, uh, and you started talking about what you want us to do at that point. You're actually just starting. You're just like, hey, like, I mean, at first um, I'm paying you now, but at first you're like, hey, like just beta test group. Just like, come in. I want to, I want to perfect my product. And I was like, hell yeah, this is what I need because I'm not implementing everything that I want to implement. I'm not operating at my, like, I have like the basics of the business down, but like, it's not, it, it's like, a, imagine like an engine that like you pull the, the, like the thing, like a lawnmower engine or whatever, and it kind of clunk, 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 clunk. And it kind of just sh shakes a lot and sort of moves, but like, you know, maybe it'll just die randomly, or maybe it'll just like shake a lot and like a bolt, bolt will come loose. And it's like, oh shit, now I have to fix it. Like, that's kind of what my business was at that point. It was sort of working, but it was a really clunky, like half broken engine that could just break at any point. I'm like, I need somebody to make them, make me fucking clean this up. Um, and, and, and I, became one of your first clients. I was like, maybe your fifth or I don't know which number it was, but I was one of you, your first You were clients. one of the first, and, yeah. And instantly yeah. I started implementing instead of 80%, it was like 90, 95%. And now it's pretty close to 100%. There are some days where I'm like, I do almost everything, but like one small thing I don't do. Um, but like, and, and also you helped me identify like the things that actually move the needle. Um, and, and like, I wasn't, I wasn't able to hone in on those as well on my own. Cause like when somebody else is helping you figure out what's actually helping you, you know, you, you have to tell them and you have to be honest. Cause sometimes I'll be like, Oh, this is moving the needle, but really it's just something that I thought was that I, I was happier to do. And I couldn't, I could lie to myself, but I couldn't lie when I had to say it out loud or type it in a text to you. I couldn't, I couldn't be like, well, I really want to do this, but like, I had, I had to be honest about this is what's actually moving the needle, even though I didn't want to do that. So like, it helped me actually do the things that mattered. Um, and instead of the things that just felt good to do. Mm. You see so much of what you shared here, it just is deeply entwined. There's a golden thread that just runs through what you've shared. And that is, focus and that is when it comes to achievement and getting somewhere in life and advancing yourself in this world the most powerful thing 
the most powerful weapon that we have is our focus and where we direct our energy to consistently. The most powerful thing we can do as individuals to get what we're looking for is to do the reps, repetition after repetition after repetition to such that we put in so much repetition of key actions and behaviors and um, needle moving activity to progress us towards where we wanna be that we consider anyone capable of accomplishing that goal. If you put in so much reps on things that really matter and get to the point where you know anyone who's done this much, they'll start seeing some real returns. That's where focus and consistency can completely be transformative for us. So what I learned as a project manager uh, was about delivery and was about starting with a vision and then implementing and moving an entire team towards an end goal and having significant budgetary constraints and time constraints and significant pressures to actually deliver things, large scale programs, strategies, all sorts to get things working and functioning in organizations where it really matters. So what I learned in my previous career was that you have to have a real specific skill set to be a very good executor. There's an inner game to it. You have to understand with total clarity, step by step, every task and sequence that has to occur to get you to your goal. And you have to have total clarity on what really is going to drive results. So a lot of my thinking is just about deconstructing where you want to be and understanding what the highest leverage focal points are and then developing and designing a process for yourself as an individual to get there. And it is based upon the principle of focus, based upon the principle that if you dedicate yourself properly and allocate your time properly towards an objective and you have a solid, solid game plan and a really good process to use to get there, then with the passage of time, you will incrementally get progression and get progression. And at a certain point, you're going to experience the compound effect kicking in, where you begin to reap a lot mm -hmm. of the rewards of the effort. And then you set bigger goals and you set bigger goals. And that is the game of goal achievement. But there is a lot that goes into it. And that is why the kind of work that we do together with accountability really matters because there is a mental side of it. There is also a physiological side of it. There is also restoration of our physical capacities using all the, the systems and approaches that we, we use for our wellness, for our, for our high performance internally. And also creating that space that we have to just with compassion, with radical honesty, with authenticity, just check in and just pause for a moment and objectively just look at where we are. Are we moving towards the goal? Is it working? Is it the case that we're doing the right things, but we just, with externalities that we can't control? It is about being objective and just leaning on the principles of execution and delivery to get us where we want to go. And now, now we know that, and now we have a significant and robust structure in place. With our partnership, we've been able to see really good progression. And you have actually started to get a little bit of a taste of what you're looking for. You've been able to get incredibly 10K months, we've had one, and we're gonna work on getting that consistently. But that is a result of a lot of showing up again and again and doing the audience building and doing the relationship building and doing the value offering and doing the, the activities that you do every single day. So these are things people don't understand about business. It's about doing these, they can seem a bit mm. dull, they can seem a bit, in, the, in and of themselves, they can seem pointless. They yeah. can see what is the fucking point of me posting this today? Why am I just uploading all these videos today? All of this we go through. But when we have the space that we have and when we can just look at it as processes, take the emotions out, take some of the, 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 the feelings that we have 
out of it and just look at it objectively and say, okay, this is the process that if we adhere to this, if we keep putting these inputs in, it is going to produce this outcome in time. It's just that I need to do repetitions here. And that is really all you can do. All you can do is put the rep in and rep in and rep in and rep in again and make sure it's the right activity. And as we know, it's sometimes happening under the surface. It's these 0.1% gains that you're making as you engage your audience more, as you put your brand out there more. Businesses fail because they don't do enough marketing. Because And what is marketing? It's just telling people what you do. It's just talking to other human beings and letting them know what you do and letting them know that you can potentially work with them and solve their problem for them. And that really is all it is to it. But we have to have a process that's tailored for ourselves to do that reliably and consistently to drive meaningful progress. Now, looking at all the things that you previously have achieved, you had to really stick in it. You had to really say, okay, I know my why. I know why this is important. I know this ties in very deeply and intimately with the life I want, where I want to go, who I want to be. And because of that, I'm going to put faith in the process and stick at it. And that's why you got the outcomes that you, you've gotten. And now because that's your reference experience and you've internalized that, now you know you've got the essential formula to accomplish anything in life. Because if you can just stick to the procedures that bring results, keep restoring yourself, ensure the systems are in place to give you the support that you need and the accountability is there, and we can objectively just create a space to just observe, yeah, and give give ourselves the layers and the factors that contribute to success, such as that accountability that gives us firmness and clarity in our vision, then success is in fact inevitable. Next question for you is about when it comes to business, and as, as you and I have both gone through a lot of ups and downs, yeah? I'd love to know some of the key like mindset or principles that you've now crystallized as you have made the beautiful progression that you have made. Appreciate that. Um, so this is something that is still in progress. I've made a lot of progress, but I still sometimes get tripped up um, by the lulls. Um, and by the lulls, I, I mean, not by like the laws. I mean, by the lulls, L-U-L-L-S, um, <laughs> for all you Gen Zs out there. Um, I, I'm not perfect at this, but one thing that I've noticed is one thing that, that has helped is actually just the fact that I have money in my bank account. Um, usually when I get tripped up, it's because I see the money, I see the numbers going down in my account and I don't see, I don't know when the next when I'll book the next shoot um, pretty, pretty consistently when that happens, I have shoots just around the corner because I've built my business to a good place. So that's one thing that keeps me like, I, I, I'd like to say it's internal changes. Um, but really I think it's external changes. If I'm being honest, I think it's the fact there's money in my bank account. I have three months of rent sitting in an account that is earning a little bit of interest. So I get like, you know, 10, 20 bucks a month just from interest from that, which isn't really that much, but it's still nice. Um, but I have that money. So if shit goes, hits the fan, I, I pay rent. I'm not going to be homeless. So like that reduces a lot of the stress. And then also the fact that I can look back and I could see that for the last year, my income has been at a certain level in my business and that level the middle of the month i don't know where my money's coming from there are months that i've had where i've had two, two or even three week lulls with zero inquiries but uh but like i've made my living expenses and then some in just the last two weeks the last one week or whatever so it still goes up and down because i don't i i'm getting more traffic i'm getting more people knowing about me and interested and more people referring to me um but there, it's still low enough numbers that there's ups and downs and there's lulls. And it's just because I have, um, because of the place I'm at in business where a lot of people know about me, but not enough to where it's, I can't, like it's consistent. There's going to be spaces without any clients. 
Um, and that is hard for me to weather. It still is hard for me to weather, but just the fact that I've, I guess what you could say is I've been diligent enough. I've been better with my money management habits um, so that I have, I've gotten myself to a place where I'm managing money a lot better so that I'm managing money to expect those lows so that I, I'm not, I'm not being like, do I have enough money for this week or this month? I'm, a, I'm like, do I have enough money for three months? And if I make sure I have enough money for three months, like who cares if I have a couple of weeks or even a whole month with no clients, which never happens. But who, if I do, I'm still going to be fine. I'm still going to be okay because I have three months of expenses. Yeah, I need to make sure that I get, I do what it takes and I'm going to use that that nervousness to motivate me. Um, but as long as I, you know, the better I manage my money, the easier it is uh, for me to weather uh, the storm. This is it. This like, when it comes to the mindset development aspect of it, part of it is actually also parts of us skills that we can develop and hone within ourselves to improve our overall experience in the world. If it's money management and, and better budgeting, so you can have the resilience to do the important work that you do and achieve progression in that, then sometimes these are really important things to work on and, and develop within ourselves. And I think it's important that we actually have that self-awareness and transparency and, and actually just objectively pause for a moment and look at aspects of ourselves that can actually be improved and observe our own patterns and put systems in place so we can ensure longer term financial resilience because at a certain level there is no shirking the work in business you you, you do have to keep showing up and keep showing up you know, entre entrepreneurs will talk about how they're like now benefiting from work they did seven years ago, eight years ago, like building their reputation by just being painfully consistent. Fingers crossed. All right, Joe. Next question for you is, in your experience as a solopreneur, someone who is responsible for the operations the marketing the delivery like every aspect of what you do depends on you you are your business yeah and in this regard i'd like to know how accountability supports yourself sure um it's super important man um First of all, I, I don't intend to stay a solopreneur forever, uh, but even even so, once I have other people I work with, I actually already am working with two other people right now in my business um, and three. So because you're working with me on my business as well. So I'm working with three other people um, on my business. Uh, so I, I wouldn't call myself a solopreneur. I think that's really not a long, a good long term game um, for, for most people because it's a lot of work. <laughs> And it's hard to take days off when you have all that on your mind and you're the only person doing it. But even then, I'll still need accountability. Um, how has accountability helped me? Uh, well, I said before, I was I had set a list for myself and I was, you know, some, some of the stuff I was doing was operational. Some of it was marketing. Some of it was website. You know, there's a bunch of different categories. I was doing all the stuff and now I'm still doing most of it. Um, I have a guy that does my website stuff. I still do some website stuff. Um, but I, and then you help keep me accountable and then somebody else helping me work on the business, but I'm still doing almost all of it, like most of it. And before accountability, I was doing 70 to 80% of what's on my list. Sometimes I was actually doing less. Um, some bad days I was doing 50%. And I also was doing, so I was doing 70 to 80% of the stuff I set up for myself. And I was also doing more of what I felt like doing and less of what I needed to do because I only had to tell myself that it made sense. And it's, it's easy to deceive yourself, at least at a surface level. At a deeper level, of course, I probably knew what I was doing, but it was easy for me to be like, okay, Joe, cool. Like you did that thing that, that makes sense. That works. It was easy for me to give myself a cookie when I didn't earn it. Um, but in being accountable to you, there's a couple of things. First of all, there are a lot of times where at the end of the day, 
I, and I think I wrote this in the testimonial to you as well, or, or recorded it yeah. at the end of the day, I'll be like, so one of the things on my, on my to-do list is to reach out to two other blogs or two other people in the dating space to get a backlink, to have a link to my site on their site. So Google is like, oh, people are linking to that site. It must be a legit site. It must be good. Let, let's show it to more people, right? I have to send an email that I'd put together. It's boilerplate. I have to send it to two people every single day. We actually just recently upped it because it's it's a big needle mover. So first of all, being in contact with you helps me know it's a needle mover and helps me know I need to do that two times a day instead of one time a day and maybe even more in the future, right? So that's one thing that we did is like focused on that and then and decided to go down on some other things. And the second thing is sometimes I'll be at the end of the day, I'll do almost everything. And if I was just working on my own, I'll be like, cool, done, right? But because at the end of the day, I'm I'm supposed to send you a message. I actually, I know that we, we, we've we been figuring out whether we should do it at the end of the day, the beginning of the day, but I've been sending it to you at the end of the day. I'm supposed to send you a message. Here's all the things I was supposed to do. Did I do them or not on each one of those things? And I, there are a lot of times where I draft the message to you and I'm about to write, I didn't do it. And then I'm like, you know what? It'll take a minute for me to send these two messages, maybe five, 10 minutes. It'll take 10 minutes max for me to find website, you know, get these websites, uh, find the contact info and send the message. I'm just going to do it now. And so I've become 90 to hundred percent effective at doing the things I need to do on my list. So it's, I'm, I do more of them. Plus each one of those things is more targeted as a needle mover than it was before. Beautiful. You see, this is a game of inches. To become successful, you don't have to be a, some sort of special individual who's got um, some sort of insider knowledge on the world. You put your time and energy in, you gain subject matter expertise. If it means something to you, if you believe in it, if you believe in yourself because you know what you can put out there, then you can simply make progression by showing up and doing these little needle moving activities and they add up. It's these 0.1% actions that we do that really make a difference when you get those backlinks. Yeah, when you, what we're doing essentially is we work together, we have an accountability partnership and I'm here to support your, your performance. Performance coaching is about being data-driven, objective and working with you as a specific unique individual and helping you be your best so you can get to your very clearly defined goal. And we've got, we both understand exactly what that goal is, what the metrics are, what we need to focus on. We have this down at this point. And then all we have to do is make those incremental progressions. Yeah. And it can, it can just be five. It can be 10 minutes that make, that makes that day really high leverage. And that's what makes the difference. Getting those reps in again and again, and again, and again is what makes a difference. And as humans, we are, we're evolved to kind of work very collaboratively. We're very tribal creatures. So when we align with others, that enables us to change how we operate. And it, it creates the opportunity to drive changes that perhaps as individuals, we may not be able to do because we're effectively pinging off each other. And that focuses us. So that's why we, I check in with everybody twice a day so we can focus the mind and bring our intention towards what needs to be done because it, because accountability for me is a mirror that we look into and it enables us to actually reshape how we operate and how we function and if we're guided by that clear clear vision and the metrics that we've got we know the income goals that you have then we know if we keep showing up and putting our intention here and focusing on these processes it's those one second decisions that matter so much. They make so, you know, if, if for example, if you've got a recurring payment that goes every every week and it's what, five bucks, you know, it may not seem a lot but over the course of a month, a year, two months, it really adds up. And this is it. It's these little gains that we make. And this is why when we have these layers in place, yeah, these actions that we take and the systems we have in place to engender them. This is how we, we leverage the power of group support, of 
um, the principle of what gets measured gets managed. And we greatly increase our likelihood of success when we have systems and processes because, as you very insightfully allude to, Joe, self-deception is one of the greatest powers in the universe. Sigmund Freud called us as humans the rationalizing creature. We can endless, endlessly justify our actions. Oh, there today was good. Yes, I was quite busy. I worked on my website. Well, yeah, I went to a networking event and so on. Yeah, we can we can justify these things all day long. But really what it comes down to is is this moving me towards the goal? Is this is this going mm. to get me there? And if so, that's what we we strategically find a way to make that a reality for you. So I'm glad to hear that you understand this because this is the, the actual inner game of high performance. It's about understanding yourself. It's about understanding the game of goal achievement because it's a coherent skill in and of itself. Like high performance is an art and science and it involves a lot of subtlety. Yeah. And a person has to, at some point, have these insights within them to be able to fully leverage this. So now we know yeah. where you are, Joe, and where you are in your journey. There are many people out there who want to work with you because they have now listened to this interview and know that all it would take for them to experience a new reality and to be introduced to a world where they don't have to suffer. They don't have to have the pain of a lack of self work. They're worth it. Like we are fucking worth it, dude. All right. And a great thing someone can do a lifelong investment. They can make a gift. They can give themselves just having a conversation with you, Joe. And having the reassurance that a better life is possible and you can make these things happen. And Joe knows how to do it masterfully. He's done it for everyone else. He's one of the best in the world. Truly he is. And who else has been on this type of journey? Who else has experienced these to the depths of his being? And he's 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 lived and breathed this. And um that is why, you know, when you when you have the opportunity to get behind the lens. You see the kind of outcomes that Joe's brought to the world, right? Guys going from having a very tough time to being in control, having having options, having a sense of like self love, and that you know what, maybe it wasn't so bad after all, <laughs> you know. But that's what you can make happen, Joe. And how can people work with you and learn more? Sure. So to learn more about the packages I offer and how I use my camera to get you more matches and more dates and I'll get you leagues closer to the dating life that you want. Um, and also book a call with me if you're ready for that. Um, that is at datingunchanged.com. It's at my website. It has all the info you need, testimonials, examples from past clients, and then also the process to book a shoot. It's all on there, datingunchained.com. Um, and then if you're also interested in free tips about how to get your own dating profile photos, et cetera, um, then go ahead and check out my YouTube channel. That is passionunchained.com. A slightly different name because Passion Unchained um, has to do with my lifelong goals. Dating Unchained, um, it will be around um, for forever, but it is uh, one piece of the larger puzzle of my 20, 30, 40 year goals. Passion Unchained is their overarching thing. Um, so that's why the, the YouTube channel is a slightly different name, uh, but free, free information um, on uh, Passion Unchained, um, which is the YouTube channel and uh, getting a shoot and learning more about my shoots and what kind of results I've gotten for other clients on datingunchained.com. Super. Thank you, Joe. What have you got to, to, what I want to say is this, this is what I want to end on, actually. I think that we as people should, should invest in our love life because it is important. Yeah. It is important. And to obtain the connection, the romance, passion, the intimacy that we, we all need as humans, in, in today's world, it, it can require some effort and some work. 
But with the right guidance, it is entirely possible to turn this area of your life around if someone is struggling. I myself have been through this, Joe's been through this, and we both broke through and got well-needed experiences and got well-needed healing and are still on a journey. I still am transparent about that. But the thing is that it was absolutely workable and progress was there. I just had to trust 